All right, ladies and gentlemen, and Mitchell, we're standing by our sign today. Now, I've got the post hole digger and a shovel here. So today marks the day where I break ground on putting in a new flagpole. I want to put in a flagpole here behind the sign, uh, more just to make it look nice, really. I would put one over in the yard over there, I guess, but the septic's over there for the house as well as the power poles. So I'm gonna, I want to put it right behind my sign here, right in line with the back of this post. And then sometime in the future, if I want to add another larger flagpole, I'm gonna put it over here. That way, the larger flagpole I could put the American flag on and the state flag, uh, because flag code, the way it's set up, the American flag has to be to the left with all subsequent flags, flagpoles being on the right. So I could put the state flag and the um, American flag on this pole. And then on this side, I could put the Howl Farms work flag or something else if I chose to. So just for now, um, I think I'm going to put up a 20 foot flagpole. I got it in the house and I just have to dig the foundation for it. What you gotta do is you gotta put a base down of gravel and and some sand. And then they give you a sleeve that you gotta stick down the gravel and you gotta get it so it's nice and plumb. You gotta throw concrete in there so that that way it sets up and everything and then it's nice and level. And then you start building your flagpole on top of it. So I'm gonna try digging the hole today. Um, I'm not gonna get very far. I don't have any concrete to mix or anything. So I just more so I'm trying to get a start on this. So that way I can have it done by the farm day because I want to have a flag in here by the farm day. I just have to decide how far back I want it from the uh, from the fence. I, I want to keep it relatively close. So I'm thinking of maybe like a foot, a foot or so. Maybe like right here would be really good because we could still get through here with our equipment and not really risk hitting it too much. So. Yeah, I think it's going to go somewhere right in here. This is going to be a little difficult for me because there is a base of lime that's here. So the calf hutches that were here previously, um, Grandpa put down a base layer of lime and then we put straw down on top of the lime so that way that would drain pretty good. And I, I could still see some line here, it's this more reddish stuff so hopefully once I get past that it shouldn't be too hard to dig out that's pretty, pretty solid there goes Alicia A shovel. I've had a lot of practice with shovels this summer. Now that I basically have the hole dug, now is the time to ask myself, you know, how close was I to that fiber optic cable? Oh, that there hole is knee deep. Oh, I'm gonna go get the foundation sleeve and see where it needs to go. So I've got my hole all dug now. She's about knee deep. Yep, that there hole is about knee deep. Now, the instructions say to put the foundation sleeve down right about there and to dig an extra six inches deeper than what the found base of the foundation sleeve is at. So I could actually stand to go a little bit deeper uh, with the hole, but I need to widen out the edges because right now it's shaped like a cone. And once I do that, we would be ready to put in the gravel and the sand. And I don't have any concrete right now, so I gotta go get some of that. But hopefully within the, the next few days here, 
early this week, I can finish getting the rest of, those of the flagpole set up. So, I'll see you either today or in one of the following days here. Same video, and goodbye. We're gonna put in cement for the flagpole. Now, I'm gonna put down some sand first, and then I'm gonna put down some gravel. Uh, I really only want like an inch or two of sand and then the rest is gonna be gravel and I have to fill up the gravel so that the top of the foundation sleeve which is right here when an inch above the ground is also about an inch into the gravel so there's gonna be about four to six inches of gravel down in there There's a pretty good base of sand. All right, we got her all tied up. She seems pretty straight, not compared to the post next to it, but I can guarantee you that that post isn't perfect. So, yeah, we stole Alicia's wheelbarrow. Now we're gonna start filling it with cement, and then hopefully within the next few days here, we can finish putting it up. Move it ahead or not, there you go. No, you're fine where you were. Can you scoop it out of the barrel, Mom?
So now that we have the cement laid, we have to wait for it to cure. So I'll likely see you guys very soon. Now the cement has cured for 24 hours, as suggested that we let it in the instructions. I have the second pole here. The second pole is always the one that has the holes for the cleat, and the cleat is what you tie the rope to. So here's the cement. Looks pretty good. Now, this section, this bottom section, is actually still mobile. So they don't tell me to do this, but what I think I'm going to do is get some of that sand and I'm going to dump some sand down the center of the pipe just to give it something to push it, to pack it in with, I guess. Uh, hopefully that'll help sturdy the flagpole a little bit. And uh, there is actually a little bit of play. I can shake the top of it quite well. However, as Travis and Dad suggested, by the time that we uh, get an extra 15 feet of pipe on there, it should be, there should be plenty of weight to keep it down. So I'm not really concerned about that. So I'm um, just stick this on there. Let's see if I can. So since the cement's all set up, I can take the twine off. Since the cleat is going in this one, um, I think we're going to want to put a self-tapping screw down here to keep it from turning. I'm going to go up to the shed and I'm going to get the drill and try to find a self-tapper. I'll run it in there. Um, the big concern about it turning is because of the cleat that's on here. So we'll have the rope tied to this, but in strong wind, this middle section could turn. I have the cleat facing east, so now I'm going to drill in self-tapping screw just to hold it in place so that the entire pole does not turn. There. Cool, now she won't turn. Shall we go and get another section? I believe so. Here's the cleat. It's what the rope gets tied to at the bottom on. I'm just gonna lightly turn the screws in for now so I don't lose this. So here's the ball ornament that goes on top. And here's the truck. This is where the rope goes through and comes back down. This is the top section. So the truck will go as so. And then the ball ornament will go through this. Got those tightly screwed on now. Now I'm going to get out the halyard. So now that I've adjusted the rope so that the middle of the rope is approximately here and here, I'm gonna take a rope hook. I've got to feed it through and then this has gotta go over the hook itself. And then all I gotta do is tighten it. And that's how we make sure that the flag stairs stays where it's at. It, it'll stay pretty tight that way too. So uh, I actually brought the flag because I want to space these approximately where they need to go. So this came with the flagpole.
I think this is a three by five. I think. It's feeling fairly large at this point. I really don't want to let it drop to the ground. Wow. That's bigger than I thought it would be. Okay. So, I'm actually not supposed to let these touch the ground. So, I'm going to slip the first hook on. This will be the top, correct? Yes. Then, figure out spacing for where this one needs to go without letting the flag touch the ground. So, as it stands, this is a huge flag. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the rope hooks right about here, and then I'll adjust it as necessary because then I I want to make sure that when the wind's flying that the flag stays tight. So do the same with this one. Stick it through, going over. Voila. We have our rope hook. And there we go. So, I need to extend these out a little bit more. See all that play that's in there? Uh, I need to refer back to the destructions. What the next step is. So I'm gonna set it up there now with the flag on it. Just so I can get it up there and then I can start adjusting it and I can tie my knot on the end. America. Personally, I think it looks pretty good for not knowing what I was doing. <laughs> I need to cut the rope off shorter so it's proper length. But uh, when I go home tonight, I'll take it down. I'm gonna keep taking it down at night until we get a light to put on it, so. But for right now, I'll leave it up there. Now, I'm sure someone will say that I should have done something differently or something that I could have done better uh, putting it up, which I don't disagree with. However, being as it was my first time putting up a flagpole, I'm pretty happy with what I got. And uh, someday in the future, I want to put up another one right next to it on the other side of the, of the sign. So this is the shorter one. Uh, someday I want to put in a taller one right next to it and then maybe put a How Farms Work flag on this one and then move over the U.S. flag and the Wisconsin flag onto the other one. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you guys all the steps that it takes to put up a flagpole, at least all the steps it took to set up this one and uh, show you guys the process of it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. 
sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work, and I'll see you next time.